Welcome to this uh, legalist congregation. Dying ain't much of a living, but they're called, they call themselves the Living Covenant Fellowship. You know, and they study the letter, of course, which uh, the Apostle Paul says, "Look, uh, live according to the spirit of the law, according to loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself." But these people, um, besides one, you know, uh, certain individuals, certain ministries wanting to stone homosexuals. These people would love to stone lunar Sabbath keepers. <laughs> Just a lunar, you know, not, not anything really serious according to the Torah, but in their eyes, the lunar Sabbath keepers are following a different Sabbath, even though uh, all over the Bible talks about the new moons, which they don't keep the new moons, and so according to the Bible, they should stone themselves. Um, each of them should just take a big rock and smack each other over the head until each of them dies. And I assume maybe the last one standing, then they can just, uh, I don't know what they'd do. Um, but the Sabbaths, of course, is what the guy's trying to talk about here. And we're just going to look at some scripture and listen to him a little bit for a few seconds. Um, otherwise, we'll, you know, I'll spare you that the whole congregation. This had, this had to be done through the court system. There had to be two witnesses, and they were the ones that were... The so so he, wants, he wants the court system to arrest Lunar Sabbath keepers, put them through there, and then um, hand them over to the congregation to get stoned. That's what he wants. Yeah, the rest of the know that. So all the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as Yahweh commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. That's how you're cut off. Yeah, by the way, that wasn't a lunar Sabbath keeper they were stoning in the Torah, but, you know, he, he's insinuating that it somehow um, in the Bible there's an example of someone being stoned for keeping a lunar Sabbath, which there isn't. And yet, uh, he's just reading it out as if it is. He's just lying through his teeth, his bushy little beard. When you violate the Sabbath. If you know better and you are intentionally violating the Sabbath. By the way, um, there's a lot of laws about keeping the Sabbath, about not working, and, you know, lighting candles is one. Uh, it could be counted as work, using electricity, um, like heating food, that type of thing. And so, if these people have had a hot meal that day, maybe there's a kitchen next door and they go and get a cup of tea after the service. That's actually counted as work in the Torah. So again, they should stone themselves. Um, if anyone has a, had a cup of tea, a hot meal, um, that day they're using lights or burning electricity, uh, that's actually counted as work as well on the Sabbath. If you're going strictly by the Torah, but these of course are people are not going at all by the Torah. They're just going by their fleshly, carnal interpretation of God's word. Now let's look some of the uh, some of the things it says in the Bible, New Testament in this case Paul kept, kept a, let, a later Pentecost we're just going to read some of this out, get a bit of understanding if you count the days in Acts 26, 38, 21 1 to 30, it shows the Apostle Paul keeping Pentecost beyond 50 days from the Passover to Pentecost, that's the traditional day that these clowns would keep uh, a false Pentecost, which is actually called the Feast of Sabbaths, according to Scripture. But these people are so ignorant of the Bible that it's just, it's just unreal. Um, there is quite a detailed map of Paul's journey um, that this brother, Arnold Bowen, made up. This is fairly old lunar Sabbath booklet. It's over 10, 15 odd years old, probably. It still gives a, a reward of ten thousand pounds to anyone who can prove a Sabbath outside the solely lunar calendar of the Hebrews. So for instance, John 5, 9 puts the Feast of Sabbath on the 29th. And the early church fathers understood this to be the Feast of Pentecost because John records all three feasts. Okay, And so you read in John 5, 9, um, four moons and then the harvest. And so what we have there 
is on the 29th day of the third moon we we have a we have what's called uh, the true day of Pentecost four moons and then the harvest but in the traditional account is kept about 50 days before that all the evidence is there it all adds up um, there we go Pentecost is on the 29th of the 4th moon same as the other two pilgrim feasts first and seventh moons are on Sabbaths on the 15th day why well, think it is strange that the third pilgrim feast can be on a Sabbath also instead of the morrow after a Sabbath can be on the 28th day the Sabbath but not the day after the Sabbath Josephus records Pentecost can fall out on the day next to the Sabbath as though it was not always that way every time depending if there were one or two non sorry no moon months between counts okay and I wish I could, maybe I'll try and find a little diagram for you um, like I perfectly understand this but there we go it's John 435 which is an important one say not ye that there are four months or moons okay and then cometh the harvest it's very important to discern that that word is moon because that's the, the English word month comes from the Hebrew word uh, yerech or it's, it's, it's actually moon well I say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white ready to harvest okay I think W TC world's last chance share this uh, teaching about the true date of Pentecost so there's your first fruits there on the first month and there's your first Sabbath after the first fruits so you get one two including the new moon which would be well new moon three okay three four um five six seven would that be right the sabbath after this would be you know, one two i don't think include the new ah there that's where i made the mistake it's called the feast of sabbaths so i have to count seven sabbaths from the wave chief so it's one two three four five six seven now this is how we get to the traditional count of Pentecost my friends I mean you might think oh uh, sometimes yeah they round it off um, to the, the closest Gregorian day but it's called the Feast of Sabbaths it's not the Feast of Pentecost now if you want the Feast of Pentecost you count 50 days from that day which you get to the 29th, 29th day of the fourth moon, just as Jesus says in uh, John 4.35, four moons and then the harvest. This is when the wheat is harvested or should be harvested in Israel um, because when the Israelites came into the promised land, they um, planted the wheat on the first month you read about that in Joshua okay and so to have a wheat harvest it takes between 100 and 120 days and so you can count between 100 and 120 days from the first week in the first month to that day it's pretty accurate but if you're going by God's count in Leviticus number uh, seven Sabbaths from the wave sheaf okay one two sorry you have to count that one yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You always get um, the first Sabbath, which is the eighth day of the third moon. And that's when God speaks to Israel. God speaks to the Israelites. And then Moses goes up and receives the, the Ten Commandments, which, of course, he goes, goes up and fasts for 40 days. And so that's why on the first Pentecost, we read about in Exodus, is when... Um, 
Moses through these commandments or, or got them to, to or they were causing um, fornication and debauchery between each other and 3,000 Israelites died when Moses came down that first time and Moses had to go back up again uh, for another 40 days and nights um, and this is this is probably likened to the time that Yeshua went out fasting in the wilderness I, I think that Yeshua would have been baptized during this this period by John the Baptist and he went out and fasted for 40 days and nights and um, it says that he started his ministry on Yom Kippur and so you would have seen he, he would have fasted these 40 days and nights which would have taken him to about around this time in the 6th month with which I think the 6th month is Teshuva which means uh, repentance. I'll just double check that for you. Yeah, well, a lot of these names have been paganized. It's actually Elul, but uh, you know this has been this is a pagan word. Shouldn't be there. You know that's why I had to rename that in the Jeshurun calendar when I when I did that. Um, a few of you got copies of that. I haven't done one because I think that uh, anyhow. Yeah, it's called Elul. Which uh, there's a there's a meaning. Well, we're getting it as a one of the meanings is repentance, which it means to shuva. So maybe there's another meaning for elal. Maybe uh, maybe I was right the first time. Uh, okay. Well, it does basically carry the connotation of repentance because the next month is a very, very high um, holy days when you have Yom Kippur, uh, the Feast of Trumpets, you know, Yom Terra, the day of shouting, and uh, the, the, the ten days of awe where, you know, God is going to judge, judge the nations, I think, and there's going to be the resurrection at that time, probably unless it's going to be at uh, the same time as Yeshua was resurrected then that's possible as well but these feast days have meaning all of them have, have uh, meaning and uh, again this is about the wheat harvest 110 to 120 days not 50 days this is the true count to Pentecost and uh, not even many that Lunar Sabbath keepers understand this uh, teaching. But this is some solid gold. If you want, you know, real uh, hidden treasure, if you like, in God's Word. You know, you, you gain understanding when you have the Spirit, or you ask for the Spirit of understanding. You know, you begin to read God's Word and uh, it comes alive and you, you get understanding. It's like one big maths equation and you, you just get it in your head and you're like, wow. It's a lot more amazing than um, the way they try and describe it in these uh, legalist, legalistic congregations where if, if it was according to the spirit of the law, they'd end up just be stoning each other. But thank God we're under grace. Thank God that um, we can observe the spirit of the law, which is about um, understanding God's word. And uh, therefore, you know... Uh, Teshuva, getting people to repent through true understanding of God's word, I think is another way for people to repent of their bad understanding, their misunderstanding, their very carnal understanding of, of, of the way um, God works and uh, his, his holy word is alive. It's not just uh, dead words on a page. You know, for example, again, uh, Paul said, after the way they call heresy, so I worship I, the mighty one of our fathers. And so, again, these legalist little inbred congregations, you know, um, they're just, just an absolute embarrassment as far as um, anything goes, really. Evangelism, teaching, preaching the gospel, uh, apostolizing, anything. It's just an embarrassment. It's, uh, it's almost like you're just hiding your face, looking at these guys and going, "Please, please, you 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 got to be joking. You got to be, you got to be joking. What you're saying. You want to stone, you know, learn, uh, are learner Sabbath keepers ahead of gays in 
homosexuals and lesbians are they ahead or behind I'm, I'm not really sure but he's obviously got a huge hit list that they would love to just stone everyone in the face of the earth except them of course nutcase